I got on the back of the sled and I said, and I swear to God, I said this mush. And nobody's ever said mush, ever. That's, that's a misnomer too. You say hike. I stood on the sled and said mush and nobody left. So all four dogs were sitting, they're kind of scratching. You know? So I tied a rope around my waist and I tied it to the front of the team and I became the lead dog. And, um, I thought this is really stupid. So I walked the trap line with the dogs pulling the sled. And they were they were nice to pull the sled, but when I stopped, they'd stop. I mean, they didn't, there was no force. Lead dogs are everything, by the way, and, and there was none of that. So I had this 30 mile line, and the dogs would call all my gear and I'd walk in front. When somebody heard I was doing that, and they had this dog named Bea that was half wolf. He was psychotic. I mean, he was literally psychotic. He was insane. And, and he was a lead dog, so I hooked him up in front, I got on the sled, and I learned that you say hike. I didn't say much, I went hike, and pff, I'm out of the yard, I'm barely hanging on. This thing is, he's insane, we're just screaming through the woods, and I'm thinking, this is how it's supposed to be. It's Jack London, oh, it's great, I'm whipping through the brush, you know. Three miles out, he stops and tries to eat the team. He was absolutely nuts, and he, he'd have these seizures. Uh, and, and I watch him, and three mile, three mile, every three miles, he'd start slowing down, he'd start slowing down. And he'd get kind of shaking like this, and he'd turn back on the team. Well, they'd, they'd come back to me because they, they knew he's a big dog. And, and I, would, I would have this whole team in my lap with, with Maya trying to eat about four of them. You know? and, so I started watching him. I wound up with a 200-mile trap line in northern Minnesota um, with traps set every three miles because when he started to have his seizures, I'd go up and tie him to a tree and he'd stand there. And, 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 and then and it'd take about five minutes for it to go away and, and it would go away. They weren't real seizures, they were episodes. <laughs> Psychotic episodes. So I had this incredible trap line with every three miles stop, every three miles stop. And I do these kind of clover leaves of traps and it worked out really well. I mean, I did really well trapping. It just, they uh, had found a new way to trap for me. But after about five months of that, and, and being terrified, and a lot of scars from Bea, by the way, he would bite me too. Uh, somebody gave me a dog named Cookie that they were actually going to put down. And, uh, she became my leader. She had worms really bad, that's all that was the matter. He thought that she was sick. And she had just worms. I wormed her and started feeding her beaver meat. I trapped beaver at that time. Beaver meat is the most nutritional meat on the planet, period. It's the highest level of protein. Uh, all, all nutritional items in that meat are, are almost perfect. Rabbit's a close second. Venison's way down. Venison is junk meat, all venison. 11% uh, protein, beaver's 37. <coughs> the, the difference is astonishing. Venison tastes good, but it's worthless to eat. There's no food value, particularly. Um, unless you eat it raw. And that's bad because it's got worms. Don't eat it raw. So I, I trapped for three years. I kind of quit writing. I found out I could not not write. I could not not write. I, I am a writer who runs dogs, a writer who has had Harleys, a writer who plays professional, had played professional poker, but a writer. And when I tried to quit writing because of this crooked publisher, I, I simply could not. I started writing stories for nothing, performing them in town halls. People would bring, I would do readings, and people would bring cake and pie and stuff. And this is little places in Minnesota, and that's how I got paid. And it was not a bad thing. Um, and I got sick of killing. I got sick of trapping. I'm not making a moral statement here. I just didn't like doing it personally anymore. I don't think that people should really like hunting after they're about 16. Men, men should think that it becomes not what they do after they're about 16 years old, unless they're teaching a boy how to do it. And I was at a point where I didn't like that anymore, the killing act. So I, I kind of quit trapping. I figured, well, I couldn't kill it. A, dio, a coyote or a dog, so, so if I couldn't do that, I couldn't really kill coyotes because they're dogs, and if I couldn't do that, I couldn't kill beaver because they had houses and, and dead homes and bathrooms, and, and they do. Pretty soon I'm stepping over mice, you know, and, and um, but I'd fallen in love with running dogs. I absolutely loved it, and love it still. So I wanted this 200-mile trap line with no traps. I pulled all my traps, but I'd go out and take off with the dogs, and people just thought I was a really bad trapper. I never got anything, you know, and, and I was coming off the trap line once, uh, I had somebody visiting I didn't like very much, a brother-in-law, I, <laughs> I went across this lake in the moonlight, it's Clearwater Lake, northern Minnesota, uh, it was about 30 below, and there was a full moon and I was running through the moonlight with this 
team, and it's at the end of the lake. There were these huge pines, they call them ponderosas up there, they call them Norways, but big white pines, about this big around and probably 100 foot tall, with no brush to the top. They're just straight, kind of just glorious cathedral kind of pines. And as it went up through them, the, when dogs run, they're silent, they never make a sound. And when it went through these pines, the, the breath from the dogs inverted and came over their backs and hit them, the steam. So it was like I was being pulled by the steam ghost up through the moonlight. It was just stunning. It was, I mean, just beautifully stunning. And I kept, at the top we came out and the steam kind of dissipated, the dogs were there again. And there was a fork in the trail, and if, if I go straight it was about two miles, or 20 miles home, about two hours. And there was somebody there I didn't like very much, and, and I thought if I hang a right on this other fork, I'll see it again. And I hung a right and I ran eight days. I ran across the Canadian border, I ran up in the boundary waters. In Minnesota, I went all through there for eight days, trapped a couple of beaver, they're easy to trap, by the way, and I snared a couple of beaver and fed the dogs and beaver, and we, I ate beaver too, and uh, I come off of that and somebody told me about the Iditarod. I had no, ever heard, never heard of it, and I swear to God this is about writing. It really is. I said I'd go run it, just like that same smart aleck kid in the, in the library said, yeah, give me a library card. I said I'd go run the race, well I didn't know. 1,100 miles. I had, I had seven dogs. I didn't own a car anymore. I had nothing, you know, and I'm in Minnesota. Well, the town of Bemidji, Minnesota heard I'd said that, and they decided to sponsor me. So they had dances and potlucks, and they called my bluff, right? So I'd never been in a dog race in my life. The next thing you know, somebody loans me a truck. Somebody or gives me a truck, old 60s Chevy. Uh, with salt rot so bad, the floor was gone. We replaced it with old metal cafeteria trays. So we had the apartments all over the floor. It was really kind of neat. 